Last class, we did a quick uh, recap of probability theory and uh, the main focus was on dealing with joint distributions. Along the way, we also saw marginal distributions and conditional distributions and the main idea was that if you have a very complex joint distribution involving many random variables, then explicitly representing it would be very difficult because you will end up with 2 raised to n values in the binary case, which is uh, very hard to represent. So, we wanted ways of smartly factorizing the joint distribution and we started with the chain rule and then we simplified the chain rule by making certain what assumptions? Independence assumptions, right? And that is why independences or conditional independences are very important for the remainder of this section or the next 20 30 percent of the course uh, because that will allow us to simplify the joint distribution represented in a more natural, compact, and modular manner, just as we had done for the student case where we had three random variables intelligence, uh, SAT score, and grades. And instead of requiring the 11 parameters that we should have required, we were just able to manage with seven parameters. Of course, in the small example, it is not really huge, okay, 11 was also manageable and now you are doing 7, but when you really go to many more random variables, this benefit would become more obvious, right, okay. We ended with this question and that is where we will start the next module, which is can we use a graph to represent a joint distribution, right. So, let us see what I mean by that and how to do it. So, suppose uh, we have n random variables and all of them are independent given another random variable c, okay. So, what is the total number of random variables that you have? n plus 1, right. Of these n random variables are independent of each other, pairwise independent given the random variable c, okay. So, now uh, this is one way of representing it, right, that I am saying that there is a random variable c and this arrow says that all the random variables x1 to xn actually depend on this random variable c. Right. Now, how would the joint distribution factorize in this case? Starting with the chain rule, what would the joint distribution look like? How many of you have seen this before? Please raise your hands high up. I will ask this question again after 3 minutes and then all of you will raise your hands. Uh, how would this joint distribution factorize? You will start with the chain rule, right. This is what the chain will look like that because you took c because there was a natural ordering, right, because everything depends on c. So, you said c, then x1 given c, then x2 given x1 c, then x3 given x2 x1 c and so on. Now, what would happen? What are the kind of terms that you will, uh, you will, that will remain in this expression? x i given c in general, right. So, this is going to be, since all x i's are independent of x j given c, whenever you have c on the condition side, you can get rid of all the other variables, okay. How many of you have seen this before? I will ask again after 1 minute and then all of you will raise your hands. What model is this? Everyone? Nice. How many of you have seen this before? All of you, okay. So, this graph nicely encodes this independence assumption that all the variables are independent of each other given this variable c, right. And that is what the graph is trying to tell you that there are no dependencies between x1, x2, and so on, but all of them are dependent on c, right. And this is actually the naive Bayes model. And it makes the assumption that the n choose two pairs of the random variables are all independent of each other given the random variable c. And that is the naive assumption, right? Because in practice, now let us go back to our famous, now famous example of drilling oil. I mean, you do not expect salinity, pressure, and all that to be independent of each other given, say, whether the oil exists there or not, right? But a naive Bayes model actually makes this naive assumption, and you will be surprised that in practice it works quite well. It is not a killer model, it is not that it is the one solution that you can use for everything, but it does reasonably well given the simplicity, right. And the simplicity now has some repercussions, right. So, can you go back and tell me that I had stated three problems for the, uh, for a general joint distribution, right. What were those three problems? Computational, cognitive, statistical. Do you see all three of these actually go away once you make this naive assumption? Computational why? Because the storage requirement is very less, right? How many tables do you need to store? Assuming everything is binary, interesting. How many tables do you need to store? 
for each x i how many tables do you need to store one table for every x i ok I see why you are saying one I would have said two tables one for the case when c is equal to one and the other for the case when c is equal to zero. But ok you can put both that information in one single table also that is also fair enough. So, you need order n tables right whether you count it as 2 n plus 1 or n it is still order n right. So, that is clearly simplifies. Now, cognitive if you were to ask a human that tell me what is the probability of salinity given oil it is more manageable as compared to asking that person to write down what is the probability of salinity equal to high pressure equal to low and all these things combined as compared to this single thing. And statistically even if you do not have a lot of data the number of parameters that you need to estimate is much much smaller here. In fact, it is order n again right and those are in the binary case and those are again easy to handle right. So, so the key thing here right which makes the naive Bayes model simple and popular I would say is that they are making this independence assumption which greatly simplifies the joint distribution right. So, this is the idea that we need to latch on to that independence assumptions are important and I have been kind of trying to reinforce this again and again even during the last lecture. And the other key idea is that you can use actually a graph to encode this information right. So, graph graph clearly tells you what the situation is that all the variables are independent of each other given C right. So, this is what we are going to build on and naive Bayes model is a very special case of a Bayesian network right. It is a very special case of a, a Bayesian network. So, Bayesian networks actually build on the intuition that we develop for the naive Bayes model in particular that you can use a graph to represent it. And the second thing is that these independencies help you to simplify the joint distribution ok. So, but unlike the naive Bayes model they are not restricted to these very strong or naive assumptions right. I mean they are very strong hence naive ok. And we could use graphs to represent joint distributions. So, for example, the first example that we had where we had only these two random variables intelligence and uh, grade actually we need the arrow here right? ok. So, we have this uh, simple graphical models in that case and the 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 graph now since I am talking about graphs we have to tell what are the nodes and what are the edges. So, the nodes are random variables and the edges indicate dependence and they are directed edges. So, it tells you which variable depends on which variable right. So, there is a semantics encoded in the direction ok. So, that is what a Bayesian network or a graphical model or a or not a graphical model a directed graphical model or a Bayesian network is ok. Now, let us revisit the student example and we will not just revisit it we will also introduce a few more random variables and independence assumptions right. Now, can you tell me what are the independence assumptions that I am making here or at least tell me what are the dependence assumptions that I am making here what variables depend on what grade depends on intelligence and difficulty of the course SAT score depends on intelligence and there is a recommendation letter which depends on grade in the course right. So, the grade now depends on students intelligence and the exams difficulty level the SAT score depends on intelligence and the recommendation letter depends on the grade ok. Now, the Bayesian network contains a node for each of these random variables and the edges depend denote the dependencies and the direction of the dependency ok. Uh, now, one thing which is clear is that that is why I asked you tell me what the dependencies are and that is very easy to say because each variable clearly depends on its parent and that is how we have actually constructed the graph right. So, this graph actually encodes our assumption about how this student world behaves right or this simple student world that we are considering it encodes our assumptions about that. Is this the only possible graph that I could have drawn? I could have made a different set of what is this actually this is a this is my choice of the model this is how I think the world works or the student world works I could have assumed something different can you tell me one extra edge that you could have added here. The letter could also depend on the SAT score right? I mean typically when someone writes a letter they also ask you your CGPA or other things right that is not only the course or the project that you have done and so on that is also a fair assumption. But I made this assumption or rather the textbook has made this assumption that this is how the student world works and we will just stick to that and we will come back to alternate choices also ok. Now, the Bayesian network can also be viewed as a data structure it actually provides a skeleton for representing a joint distribution compactly by factorization. What do I mean by that actually? How can you use this as a data structure? What are you going to store in the graph? for every node what do you think you should need to store the graph gives you a factorization right. So, for every node can you tell me what will you store along with that node definitely not the joint probability distribution ok. Then what are the other two options 
conditional and marginal. So, which node here will have a marginal distribution associated with it? I and D, because they do not depend on anything. Which are the nodes which would have a conditional distribution associated with them? Yes. And you see that if you have all this information, you can actually compute the joint distribution, right. So, this graph is a very neat way of looking at it as a data structure, where you have these nodes and each node has the local probability distributions. And from all these local probability distributions, you can compute the joint distribution. Why do I call it local? Why do I call it local? Why local? Yeah, it just talks about its parents, right. It only says this table actually only has this, it does not have all the variables, right. That is why it is not global, that is very easy to say, right. It does not have S and L in particular. It only has the local neighborhood that matters at that point, right. It only has the variable of interest and its immediate parents. It does not have anything else. So, it is definitely not global, hence local. Is that fine? And there are five such local probability distributions that you have, but this is not what I wanted, right. I wanted the joint distribution. Why did I, what is the point of having these local probability distributions? This is not going to give me anything. I want the joint distribution. What do I do with this local distributions? What can you do? What does the graph actually give you? A dash of the joint distribution? A factorization, right. So, the graph is actually giving you all the factors that you need for the joint distribution, right. And what is, if I write the joint distribution, uh, oh, we have already simplified it, okay. So, what we should have done is actually probably written the chain rule, right. And based on the dependencies encoded in the graph, we could have got rid of certain variables in the chain rule. And this is what we would have left with. How many distributions are there on the right hand side? 5. And where are these distributions located? They are on the graph, right. So, these 5 distributions no associated with the relevant nodes give us all the information that we need to compute the joint distribution, right. So, this gives a very natural way of both visualizing it as well as storing the information that is relevant. And now, in this 5 variable case, tell me how many parameters do you have now? Uh, remember that 4 of these variables are binary and one of them is uh, takes 3 values. So, what is the total number of variables that you would need for a joint distribution? 4 are binary, 1 is, no, no, I, how many would you need for a joint distribution? unfactorized joint distribution. If I want to give you the full table, how many values do I need to give you? How many? 48. Is that fine? 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3, right. How many do I have here? 15. Is that all? How many did you count here? 1. Good. So, because we have to remove that summation equal to 1, right, we have to account for that. So, 1 here, 1 here, uh, 8 here, 1 here and 3 here, right. Is that fine? Which one 2? Oh, this one has 2. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right? So, we are, we have a total of 15, right? So, now you see even with 5 variables, you do you see a significant reduction, right? Now, it is not just 7 versus 11, but 15 versus 48, like 1 fourth or 1 third of what we needed earlier, right? And as the number of variables grow and as the number of possible values that these variables can take grow, you will see much more reduction once you start making these independence assumptions, right? Okay. Uh, and from this joint distribution or from this conditional distribution. So, this is known as a conditional parameterization of the joint distribution because your parameters are all conditionals or marginals. And from this conditionals and marginals, you can actually compute any joint distribution that you want, right. So, in particular, if I want you to compute this, how will you do it? So, you want P of i equal to 1. So, we will take this value. P of d equal to 0 is the next thing and so on, right. So, P, equal, P of g is equal to b. That means, the second possible grade when i is 1 and d is equal to 0. So, which entry are you going to take? This, right. Everyone gets this. I mean, this is very straightforward, but I just want to go over it once, right. And you can convince yourself that any joint distribution that I ask you or any particular configuration that I ask you for these 5 variables from these tables, you can compute them, right, ok. So, that is what uh, this entire structure, which means the graph, which includes the nodes and the edges along with all the conditional or the local probability distributions that you see with each of these nodes is together known as the Bayesian network, ok, fine. So, now uh, this section, right, is again to motivate, these are handcrafted, right, this is your assumption of the, how the world works, right. And based on this assumption, now you could think of it as that, just as when I made the assumption, suppose uh, 
y and x are scalars ok. If I made the assumption that y is equal to mx plus c right, then basically I have made the assumption that I only need to learn two parameters for this. As opposed to if I made the assumption that y is equal to w 25 into x raised to 25 the polynomial that we had seen, then I had made the assumption that we need to learn 25 parameters for this that that is effectively how it translates to right. I did not make an assumption that I need to learn 25 parameters. I made an assumption for the model, but that is how it translates to the number of parameters. Here we have made an assumption that this is how the world works and that has replications in terms of number of parameters that you learn and that has replications in the terms of amount of data you will need and so on right. If you add an extra edge here or there the number of parameters will increase right or if you make some more dependence independence assumptions right if you just say that I will ditch difficulty it just depends on intelligence and the number of parameters will change and so on right. So, that is completely your modeling choice right. So, that is very important to understand when you do machine learning that you come up with the model after that perhaps everything is automated and right? learning learning from the data is automated, but you have to tell me what the model is and depending on that everything will change right. So, that is I cannot emphasize enough that this is the choice the modeling choice that you have made ok. And please appreciate that this ties back to what we have been saying in terms of data model parameters and so on right. We always consider some models you decided to use a recurrent neural network even though I had it on the slides, but you decided to use it for language modeling or whatever right? and that is why you wrote those complex equations and the number of parameters and so on right ok. okay.